Hello folks, here we are doing some more art journaling. Um, I have cans and paper, watercolor paper, and some Liquitex Professional Gesso with my Daler Rowney wash brush. And I am just covering that page completely. Um, I am going to add some chipboard to this page, some Umwow, Umwow Studio chipboard. And I very well could have put the chipboard down before the process um, of gessoing since I'm just going to gesso back over it completely, but I didn't. I didn't really know where I was going when I started this and then I had that distressed Harlequin background sitting there and it was totally delicious and I thought I'd use it. I did snip off a piece of it to put up in the top left hand corner to help create um, some balance and some continuity throughout the whole page. I'm using some gel medium. You can use matte or gloss uh, to glue those down. And once that's dry, I'm going to go over everything with gesso a couple times because the Liquitex Professional Gesso, it's a little bit transparent, not completely, but sometimes it does take uh, a layer or two or sometimes three, depending on what you're covering up. You can see there's kind of a grayish sort of film a little bit around um, on my the background of my page. That's the ash from the chipboard. So Amwa Studios chipboard is cut with a laser cutter and our chipboard is very, very, very thick in this craft color. It helps it stand up to a lot of mediums and a lot of altering, but sometimes that ash kind of gets in the way. So also uh, one of the reasons I'm doing more than one layer here is to cover up some of that ash that had worked its way into the gesso. So that was layer two, and I do believe that I go in with layer three as well. Uh, I just had to be a little bit careful on the recesses here because the chipboard is so super thick. Um, those diamonds that are cut out, I definitely have to get that gesso out of those. I'm just making sure that I'm drawing between each layer. Otherwise, it'll kind of just be like pushing the gesso around. But I want it to completely dry so I can do another layer and then completely dry that one as well. You can see here I ended up getting a smaller brush to help me get some of that gesso out of the inside, the recess of that, um, the negative spaces, I guess I could say, of the Harlequin, dis the distressed Harlequin background. But um, it's fine because that extra gesso that's in there, I just spread it over some of the darker areas of the page and then it just all spreads out nice and even that way. Same with the area in the top corner, don't in the top left corner, don't forget that. But we want, I want, I wanted to work with lighter colors this week. I've been working with a lot of black and whites. I kind of always use a lot of neutrals, but I was working with a lot of black and whites and then last week with some really heavy, intense color. So this week I wanted to work with a bit more muted palette and to do that I needed to have a nice white background to work on otherwise my colors will get lost. So that's why there's so much gessoing here in the beginning but we're almost done and it's totally worth it. I can't I can't stress enough like how much good prep work will set you up to have better pages later. So the fact that I started with cans and watercolor paper and then it now has four complete layers of gesso on it is really going to set me up to get it very, very wet and my paper is hardly going to buckle at all. It's, an, it's really, really nice. I'm doing that, that again where I'm kind of heating and pulling up the extra chunky gesso that's kind of pooled in those recesses. Now I've got out some Prima Bloom sprays, color bloom sprays, and I have a few different um, sprays and I, you know, I don't have one favorite over the other. I just have these and they're kind of um, sitting there and staring at me. I haven't used them in a while, so I thought I would get those out. I have, it's a coral color, but I have to double check the actual name of it because I can't remember, but that that gold one is um, a tea stain is what they called that so it's very cool I'm using the two together and I do want them to kind of run around in the background of the page and kind of mix a little bit but not a ton so wherever I was getting really deep pools of water I did use a, um, a baby wipe uh, so I am using some baby wipes to kind of sop that up but um, I'm not always using baby wipes. I kind of go back and forth between baby wipes and a piece of muslin that I have sitting here. So what's really cool about the muslin is if you sop up a lot of um, the extra color and kind of wetness that you have going on, the muslin gets dyed that color and it's already kind of a cool natural cream color. I buy the unbleached 
um, muslin in yards, like 10 yards at a time. Um, and then sometimes I just rip it into strips or, or sections and I'm just blotting the excess color with that. And then the muslin gets dyed these colors. And if the pieces are small enough, then they can be project specific and I can use it as a piece later as a layer in this art journal page. So, um, Sometimes I also have a really big piece. It's more like a yard and I just use it on multiple projects. Um, it's very cool. I, I really love it. And uh, it's a great way to just have another kind of layer or embellishment to add later in my page. So now I'm just going to make sure and heat everything super dry. And uh, I, I did heat it with a heat gun, but I also let it sit overnight. So that's that kind of break in the video there. And now that I'm back, I've got gotten out some Blick gesso and I think I talk about this a lot too, but I switch back and forth between two gessos. The smooth gesso, um, it's super smooth by Liquitex. And then this is a, a much heavier version of gesso. It's the Artist brand by Blick. So I actually buy it in a gallon tub and then just refill this little tub. But I love it because it's so thick and it has so much texture to it. When I use it with a palette knife, I can scrape it across my page, all this color. And it kind of does two or three things. I guess I should say three things. The first thing is that it helps blend all of um, the colors back together. So sometimes if your colors are looking a little segregated or if they're looking a little blocky, like you have color blocks, use some gesso, kind of scrape it around, and that will help your page be more cohesive. Two, it's adding some nice texture. It's highlighting all the gorgeous textures that we've got, both from the chipboard, from our page getting a little warpy during the wet stages, and also uh, from the texture of the cans and watercolor paper. So I love this cans and watercolor paper. It's really smooth on one side, and the other side has a really delicious texture to it. So depending on what I'm doing, sometimes I flip the watercolor page over. The third thing that that gesso is doing is bringing back some white space. So white space is super, super important um, in color theory, in composition, and it's really important to me aesthetically. I love splashes of white and black. So uh, that's what I did. I scraped that the really long skinny palette knife across my page with some gesso on it. Then I did a tiny bit of splattering with those same um, colors from Prima but then I went back and kind of dabbed them up. They were a bit too intense. Now I've got some masking tape and it's just regular masking tape by Pro Tapes and uh, then some washi tape. This is uh, actually Tim Holtz tissue tape and it's got the music notes on it. And uh, I'm just kind of stapling those into place because it doesn't really matter um, what kind of tape you choose that's like this, whether it's masking tape or washi tape, eventually it may start to peel up. So by stapling it in place and then also using some gel medium right here, I'm able to really secure those tapes and, and reinforce the adhesive that they have. Now I've got out a piece of cardstock, and this is a Viva Las Vegas stamps rubber stamp that um, I designed. I found these vintage tarot cards. They're very cool, and I've turned them into some stamps. This one is the Fortune tarot card. I love it so much. And I'm using some archival ink here, just the straight black. If I could find my archival black soot, that's what I would use. But I have <laughs> misplaced it since I went to a crop a couple weeks ago. Got to find it. And then I'm going to trim the tag down. I'm only trimming it down. I, oh, I said tag. I meant card. Um, this little tarot card. I'm only trimming it down on three sides. And then the top, I'm going to leave just like it is, and uh, I'm going to rip it so that it's a bit more um, distressed. Yeah, it's kind of a cool technique. It's super easy to do. You just don't cut on that third edge. You rip. Um, before I rip it, though, I'm going to get out some walnut ink distress stain, and I'm going to distress the edges of my new tarot card here. I will spray it with a spray bottle to help activate the ink and then give it that kind of splotchy watercolor effect. Heat it with my heat gun. Now the thing to remember is that, oh there, and then I ripped it. Easy peasy and it's really a, a fun technique and kind of just adds another layer of dimension. Here's that piece of muslin that I had mentioned earlier. I'm kind of going to go back and forth here and decide exactly how I want to rip it. But you can see there's a little bit of pink, a little bit of gold. It has a lot of goodness going on. 
And then um, I, I was debating getting out my sewing machine. I completely, 100% adore sewing <laughs> into certain layers. Oh, that's my puppy. Sorry. <laughs> Come here, Mo. Um, I completely 100% adore sewing into layers on my art journaling, but uh, when I teach these classes locally, it's sometimes it's hard to lug around my sewing machine or um, get all the girls, you know, kind of through it and to use the sewing machine. So my mini attacher, my tiny attacher by Tim Holtz works just fine. It has the cutest, most adorable little staples in it. And I just use that muslin as a background piece on my new card. And I'm going to use um, some matte medium here from Blick slash Utrecht. They are, I, I don't know if the same company is manufacturing both, but I do know that Blick purchased Utrecht, and so they have both Blick and Utrecht versions of most mediums. Um, and using my palette knife, I put a little bit of the medium between the paper and the fabric, and then from the fabric to the journal page. But I'm going to pull it up again here real quick and... Um, Oh, well, I guess I really try to secure it, and then I end up pulling it up because I decided that I wanted a few fibers under there. So I'm pulling off some of the excess strings from that same piece of muslin that I sopped up the, the mediums with, the bloom sprays in the water. And it's just one more layer. I keep saying just, but I guess it's these types of layers that really make the work my work because I love fibers and and different mediums and chipboard and paper and I just love like using it all together. Sometimes you'll see me pull my page away from the the camera and I'm just holding it up to see how it looks and decide if if I'm happy with how everything's going. I've been using a lot of graphite via number two pencil uh, on my artwork lately and that's inspired by uh, Robin Marie um, Robin Marie Smith and Ray Missigman and I am really really liking it so it's it's just between white and black it's got this like nice kind of smudgy gray tone to it so what I did was I extended the Harlequin background using an Umwell Studio Harlequin masks and what's really great about it since both are produced by my company um, the openings are the same size now not the spacing between the openings because for the chipboard piece they had to overlap and then for the mask they had to be separated for the stencil they had to be separated but um, keeping with that same size if I just position it correctly I can kind of scribble inside that diamond shape and then grunge it up a little bit and then I just added a bit more grunge around on some of the some of the textures and that's it so thanks so much for joining me. I will see you next week with another art journaling video. And uh, go ahead and you can click subscribe here or subscribe to my channel um, via the main page. And you can check out some of my playlists. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, you can also join my Facebook group that's dedicated to just art journaling and mixed media with me. So thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.